Hamilton is one of Hollywood's best character actors. Well known for being able to deliver both intense dramatic performances and side-splitting comedy. He's best known for his roles in films like The Russians Are Coming, The Russians Are Coming, Wait Until Dark, Glen Gary, Glen Ross, and who can forget him as the cranky grandfather who says exactly what he thinks in Little Miss Sunshine. But behind the scenes, Alan is known as an actor with integrity who chooses the projects he works on very carefully. My main concern is being in projects where I can be excited about something. Uh, I, I, I don't, most of the actors I know don't spend a lot of time projecting into all oh, the awards, blah, blah, blah. Uh, most of the actors I know are doing it because they want to work in something that feels substantial, something that they can have fun with, something they can be excited about. His is a great story. In the 50s, he dropped out of drama at college to be the lead singer of a folk music group and ended up co-writing the 1956 hit, The Banana Boat Song also known as Deo, which was later made famous by Harry Belafonte. But despite his musical success, acting was still in his blood, so he set his sights on the big screen. He got his big break in the Cold War comedy The Russians Are Coming, The Russians Are Coming, which earned him his first Academy Award nomination. That's a pretty big deal. Not many actors get nominated for their very first film role. But to Alan, a successful film isn't about the awards he receives, but about the connection he feels to the project. The part is very important to me, but I also want to know what the film is about, who the other actors are going to be with, if they're going to be jo a joy to work with, uh, who the director is. What the, I'm, I'm, I care about the, the, uh, the entity. That, that's my, my deepest concern. Uh, uh, I consider myself very much a team player and I want to be with something that has some kind of uh, integrity as, as a group effort. That's, that's the real joy I get out of my work. After showing off his comedic skills, Arkin proved he had a dark side as the psychopathic killer stalking Audrey Hepburn in Wait Until Dark and earned his second Academy Award nomination as a suicidal deaf mute in The Heart is a Lonely Hunter. In the 70s, Arkin earned praise for his work as a theatre and film director, as well as writing two bestsellers, a children's book and a book on yoga. On the acting front, the 70s, 80s and 90s were a lean period in his career. His most notable appearances were in the films The In-Laws, Glengarry Glen Ross, Joshua Then and Now and Gross Point Blank. But Little Miss Sunshine turned it all around. His earnest and hilarious performance stole the show and introduced him to a whole new generation of filmgoers. I just thought it was wonderfully crazy. Uh, uh, this old guy becoming a heroin addict that is in, in the age of, but in his 70s. And the porn, uh, he's very unabashed about everything. He's just right out in the open about all of this everything he does. There's nothing secretive about him, which is one of my favourite things about him. Alan Arkin is widely respected for his comic timing and ability to improvise. And these skills made him the perfect choice for the chief in Get Smart, opposite the equally funny Steve Carell. Now, the two of them kept the cast and crew completely entertained during the filming of this movie with their shenanigans. Steve's a legend in the making, Alan is a legend, and to see the two of them just respect each other so much and obviously delight in each other's talents and see them, they were the only two on set that could really make the other crack up and lose it and, oh, so wonderful. I was just basically taking notes the whole time, just, just trying to see what they were doing to try to figure out their timing and there's absolutely no formula to it, they're just geniuses and um, there's, the rest of us should just enjoy. Over the course of his career, Arkin has created many memorable characters, both comedic and dramatic. So, is there a dream role he's been waiting to play? Is there a dream role? Nah, not really. There was, uh, for years I thought I, I would have liked to have played Beethoven, but... Uh, Why Beethoven? Because I don't think anybody's ever captured him. Uh, and I feel like I had a, I, I feel like I know him. I don't know why. Who knows why these things happen? Who knows? But uh, I feel like I had a handle on him that uh, would make sense out of him. And, but it's too late now. It's too late. He died when he was like 25 years younger than I am now. 
Hey, there's nothing a bit of makeup and Hollywood magic can't fix. With over 50 years on the big screen under his belt, Alan Arkin still manages to bring a cheeky youthfulness to his characters that can either make you laugh or leave you pondering after a heartfelt moment. And I'm sure he'll continue to bring that magic to us on the big screen for years to come. Stay tuned to Star Picks for all the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcast in glorious high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. It's all together better. On screen and at mnc.tv.